host and joined on stage with Joshua Lohman from the uh, EPICS program, not EPIC N, but EPICS, which is ASU's uh, program, Engineering Partnerships and Community Service. Engineering Projects and Community Service. Yeah, thanks for the assist. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Josh to introduce the students um, and get the next uh, group going. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Stephen. So I'm Josh Lohman. I'm the director of the Engineering Projects and Community Service program, the EPICS program. EPICS is a program in the IRA of Fulton Schools of Engineering for undergraduate students to engage in design-based service learning projects with community partners, both locally and, uh, and globally. We have this semester a little over 300 students working on 40 different projects. Uh, they're broken up into two classes, and both of those classes, uh, class levels are represented today. Uh, there's FSC 104, which is our introductory course, and our FSC 404, which is our uh, course for more, for more uh, senior and, and kind of veteran EPICS uh, students. And uh, so it's, uh, this is our second semester working with the uh, city of Peoria and with Project Cities on this project. It's been a really great collaboration. We really look forward to continuing that going and I'll, I'll let the students go ahead and introduce themselves in the project. Thanks. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Amanda. I am a senior four plus one student in civil engineering. I've been in the EPICS program since my freshman year. So it's been a long time coming. So I'm really excited to share our project. So I'm gonna let Evan give his little spiel and then I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, hey guys, I'm Evan. I'm a freshman in computer science and this is my first year in EPICS. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay, so we have been working with the city of Peoria to reimagine Skunk Creek. Um, so we're gonna give a general overview of the project and then some of our ideas that we've created. Okay, so our problem statement is that the city of Peoria has identified areas where their community members are not utilizing the trails and facilities to their maximum potential. Skunk Creek specifically is a trail um, for the city of Peoria that is currently underutilized. So we're trying to better utilize the space and give it a better um, aesthetic and usability for the community. So we've created a project scope and initial ideas for future construction to enhance the area. Um, so the expected project outcomes, which were given to us from the city of Peoria, as well as Stephen, were to create a user-friendly and sustainable design or designs to reimagine the space so local community members and business people are able to better interact with it. Obviously, to beautify the existing trail framework because it lacks a lot of life, um, not living life, but um, color and consistency. Um, and then as well as create it to be interactive with the landscape, so to preserve what's already there, but as well as enhance what could be. So then our role in this project has been to analyze the existing trail structure and its flaws to then consider places where we can increase connectivity between the trail um, sides north and south, as well as propose a color palette to be later branded and propose alternatives to enhance the trail. Okay, so then we're just going to go over um, what we've come up with as our conceptual design as well as um, initial design ideas that can be taken to the city um, for future implementation. So these four, the four areas that we focused on were pedestrian bridges to connect to the north and the south, um, trail branding to um, add some color, add some life, add some consistency, as well as signs to inform the public and the trail users of exactly where they're at, other information and history about the city of Peoria, and then increasing shade and benches since those are currently lacking on the trail. So our uh, section of trail starts at the Rio Vista Recreation Center and ends at the uh, spring training grounds. Uh, so it's located in uh, the city of Peoria and we have separated it into three activity nodes. The first of which is the Rio Vista Recreation Center and the uh, ballparks and playgrounds around it. The second area is the uh, Northeast 83rd Avenue Bridge, which uh, goes up into P83, which is a uh, retail complex. And then finally, the third area is uh, over to the north East at uh, McClendon's farm, as well as the spring training grounds. So um, based on the existing trail structure, we have identified three locations where possible bridges can be added to connect the southern part of the trail to the northern part of the trail, 
Um, so these are just the three locations and the reasoning behind these locations that we chose were to better connect the residential sides on the south side of the trail to the um, existing infrastructure on the north side of the trail. Um, so as you can see, the three activity nodes that Evan had just mentioned are um, very close to where we are anticipating the pedestrian bridges to go. So this again will overall increase connectivity along the trail and provide easy access um, to transition from one side to the other. Um, so then we've warning. created, oh, okay. Five minute warning. Okay, so we have created an initial cost um, of these bridges. Now, if you can see in the little footnote at the bottom, these are the most simplified costs um, that we could come up with because if the city of Peoria um, desires an intricate design, it would have to be designed from a structural engineer, which is beyond my engineering degree program abilities, as well as Evans. So these, um, our just initial costs based on um, Excel Bridge, which is a, a bridge company design or a bridge design company. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, and then with respect to our second um, consideration, the picture on the left shows our existing signs. Um, so obviously you can see that they're very tiny, not very um, easily legible and not very appealing. Um, but on the right hand side of the screen is showing the one and only sign of its um, kind existing on the trail. So we are proposing that the sign on the left be replaced with the sign on the right in order to um, create a more consistent trail, as well as at the following locations. Um, so uh, in regards to trail branding, what, we're, uh, what we did was develop some uh, logos and a color palette to incorporate into the three activity nodes and all the signs and trash receptacles and benches along uh, our section of the trail. We also wanted to find local artists to develop into a trail brand. And our goal was to increase uniformity along uh, the entire trail and uh, increase uniformity between the three different uh, nodes uh, specifically. So these are our three uh, different uh, color palettes for our different activity nodes. The first one at the top, which is consists of blue, yellow, uh, blue, purple, and yellow, is for the activity node around Rio Vista Recreation Center. The Recreation Center itself is a building, but it also has a couple of sports fields and playgrounds, as well as an already existing bridge. The second, uh, the second color palette, which consists of dark green, light green, and yellow, is for the uh, third activity node to the northeast. Uh, near the spring training field and the McClendon's farm. And uh, the third color palette, uh, which is which consists of dark red, light red, and yellow is for the P83 bridge area, which connects into the P83 uh, retail complex. Two minute warning. Okay, perfect. Um, so as mentioned, the signs from the right-hand side of that screen, um, or the slide a little bit ago. Um, we've identified the locations as to where we think these signs could be implemented. Um, and along with those signs, we will merge them with the trail branding and the color palette um, to create a real cohesive trail um, for the users in between the Rio Vista Recreation Center and the um, P83 ballparks. Okay, so then we've also created um, an idea of how we can rearrange these signs to be more um, like trail user driven. So you can add some fun facts, some map, or a map of the trail in an exact location, as well as the distance to and from these activity nodes, which Evan will touch on. Um, and then as well as um, the city of Peoria would like to inc uh, increase the knowledge of the users about the history of the trail and the city itself. So that is the location in which um, that information could be added. So this is an example of one of the smaller signs that are to, that we designed. So up at the top, you can see that uh, this is a skunk tail design because the trail itself is called Skunk Creek. And then below that is the number of the sign. Number 16 refers to uh, the sign that is near McClendon's farm. After that comes the name. And then uh, we can optionally implement a QR code system in which people can scan the QR code and uh, get to a website which features more information about the history and the surrounding nature. And then below that is uh, the distance to uh, popular nodes. For example, uh, the Rio Vista Recreation Center or the Northeast 83rd Avenue Bridge, which goes into P83. 
and then the Northeast 75th Avenue, which is the northern end of our section of the trail. So going on to uh, trash receptacles and park benches, uh, these are the current trash receptacles and park benches and uh, also uh, animal needs stations that you currently see. Uh, we wish to uh, change them to be facing inwards to the uh, actual <clears throat> nature area more and also uh, have the trash receptacles and animal needs stations place, uh, placed a little further away from the actual important like science and nature. We also wish to uh, implement our uh, previously discussed color, color, color palette into these uh, trash receptacles and benches and animal needs stations. Awesome. So uh, for, we also plan to uh, have small, uh, smaller activity uh, like points. For example, uh, we can have trail lookouts, which uh, basically can look out on the uh, flood zone, which has a lot of uh, nature animals and uh, other play, uh, other uh, uh, like scenic, scenic areas. Uh, also, we can have... Uh, Folks, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt here just in the um, uh, interest of time. Do you have any final thoughts, um, Evan and Amanda? Okay, just some of the limitations that we have. Obviously, we're working in a floodplain, so that is going to limit us on design materials that we can use. Um, and then the final delivery of the designs were due at the end of the semester. So this is our proposal to the city of Scottsdale and as well as financial constraints that we were told not to worry about so much, but it could be an issue um, down the road. So I'm just gonna leave this here. I have class because this is a little bit behind, um, but if you have questions, <laughs> if you could just direct them to me via email, that would be best. <laughs> Folks, uh, bring your questions uh, to Amanda and Evan in the breakout room. Um, and at this point, thank you so much. Um, everyone, let's, let's give them an unheard round of applause. I know you can't hear it right now, but it is roaring applause right now. Well done. Um, really great work this semester. And again, you know, challenging semester, and I think you really rose to it. But I'd love to um, uh, turn to uh, Jay, uh, Chief of Staff with the City Manager's Office at the City of Peoria. Um, Jay, do you have any initial um, thoughts or questions for the group? Yeah, mostly thoughts. And first of all, Amanda and Evan, thank you for the presentation. That was fantastic. Um, I know that we gave you an elephant and you basically broke that down into some very edible bites, uh, which is really how we've been looking at this project. So as I look at the, the approach you took, uh, it's outstanding in terms of breaking it down from not only the color palette standpoint, but identifying the different nodes and the different possibilities there. Uh, it really makes it a, a manageable project for us to then move forward with. So I really look at the work you've done here as, as something that, that will help us take this in, in, in many new directions, some of which we'll explore in, in the next semester. Uh, but, but at first glance, this, this all looks uh, like a really good start in the right direction. So thanks for all your hard work on this, particularly under the difficult circumstances that you were having to work. Uh, it's not lost on me. I know we, we turned your world upside down with, with how, you, how you conduct yourselves uh, you know, academically. So I really appreciate your perseverance and, and really getting us to the finish line with this. It's, it's a great, great uh, product. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. And just a couple things in, in particular. I, I love the approach to the signage. Um, you know, right now, you know, you, you said our, our current signage, you know, le leave something to the imagination. I couldn't agree more. I, I love how you visioned, envisioned the signage to, to take that to the next level, to bring in a lot of the, uh, you know, whether it's fun facts or historical or cultural pieces about that trail. I really like that idea. Uh, we try to do that visually, but in terms of bringing some some text and, and some some narrative to that, I think that'll really take that to a whole new level and and help us define that that space quite a bit. Mm -hmm.